Hey everyone. Playing the room to load for a second. Um, before we start, I just wanted to say a couple of things. Um, I hope that everybody is super respectful in the comments. Um, it's not easy for people to go live and speak about certain things. So I want everybody to respect my guests, um, my mods who are always on point. Uh, please just make sure you're working double time as you usually are to, you know, weed anybody out who's going to be mean. Um, and also I want to, um, say that please don't send me any super chats for this. If you want to send any money, um, please send it to uh, Christie's GoFundMe, which it, I have the link in my bio. Uh, I'd rather you send the money to Chrissy because uh, she needs all the help in the world. So with that being said, I'm going to start the, the uh, countdown and then we'll, we'll start. guests today are Ken and Susie. Hi, Ken and Susie. How are you doing, John? Hello. Um, thank you for hopping on today. Um, Ken and Susie have had a lot of interaction with um, Snowden, uh, especially Dimitri, um, over the last year and, and prior to that. So let's get into it. So Ken and Susie, um, how did you come to know Dimitri and, and how did that all come about? So I've known Dimitri, I'm going to say it's been around five years or so. Um, we met in the Facebook groups dedicated to the military trucks. As some of your viewers might remember, he had that army truck in one of the seasons. And he used to message me a lot asking questions about the truck, ask if he could call and talk about his truck and questions that he had about it. And that's that's what I do. That's my, my job. Um, so we had gotten to know each other just because of the truck, nothing much more than that. And it was when he called me up that day to ask about moving from Atlanta to LA with his truck. That was honestly the first time I even knew that he had anything to do with TV. And how that was about like, that, this was before his show was, was on, right? That was, it was before Seeking Sister Wives had started. No, it was on, but if, if you recall, they did that episode, the, where they showed him in the army truck driving across the country. So I had talked to him about the show for the first time back at that point in time when he was getting ready to move. And tell me about like yourself, yourself and your business. What do you do for um, a living? What kind of company do you have? So I run a business dedicated to rebuilding and selling parts for military trucks and fire trucks. Um, that was what really got Dimitri's interest, I guess, because of the fact that I do build these trucks. Um, we do it for whether it be a private owner, whether it be an agency ultimate soup type vehicle, um, whether it be a business that's going to turn one of these ex military or ex fire trucks into something different for construction, whatever. Uh, so that's that's what I do. Okay. All right. So fast forward. So he he um, he reaches out to you. Um, about the trucks. Yep. Uh, and that was what it was like during his first season or? Yeah, I guess that would have been, you know, I, I had talked to him previous to that, but because like I say, again, I didn't even know anything about him having a show, him being on TV. That's the type of stuff that normally I, I'm unimpressed by. I really don't care. It's, you want, you want to buy something? Here you go. I'll, I'll build it. I'll sell it all, whatever. Um, but then it was about two years ago that things started to get a little bit more serious with him where he was asking about, will I build a truck for him? Yeah, sure, I'll build a truck for anybody. I don't care, whatever. 
Um, and then it was, well, do you mind if I come and film part of that build to use on the Seeking Sister Wife show? All right, it doesn't make any sense to me as to why that would be, but okay, great. Yeah, fine. To can I film a show about you and your shop? You know, while you build this truck for me. Oh, wow, that'd be pretty cool. You know, I who doesn't want to get their business name out there? Who doesn't right. want to show what they do? Uh, so that that conversation I thought was more to me, I thought it was more tongue in cheek uh, until about a year ago. I forwarded you that email that he had sent. I woke up on that day, and here's an email from him. From later. All right, well, let's talk about the email. So yeah. um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it up. Um, so at some point, um, I'm just, just trying to line everything up. So he had talked to you about, you know, uh, you building him a truck, and then you could possibly be on Seeking Sister Wives, and, you know, that be like, kind of like a story arc, an arc in their storyline. Right. Um, and you're like, you know, cool it's my business national tv good news i think anybody would have jumped at yeah. that oh yeah um and uh so but then it then it kind of before i bring the email up it, it kind of changes be, to uh not you being on seeking sister wise but you getting your own show right and, and the part about the seeking sister wives is it wasn't about me being on that show at that point in time it was just showing the build of his truck on that show. Um, I told him back then, I'll say it now, it's, I got the uh, face for radio, the voice for silent movies. So who the hell wants to see me on TV? I've asked him that for, for the last two years. Um, but as things progressed, you know, he's a great salesman. He has a lot of charisma. He can convince you that uh, when you're out in the snow, you need to, you need to have a snowball fight for sure. All right, so let's fast forward a little bit. So before I bring the emails up, so that way it makes sense to everybody when I show them. Um, Dimitri, uh, so Dimitri charmed you guys, right, to yep. start working. Now, you, you started working on a truck for him. Um, not at that point in time, no. No. Okay. But we got a little ways to go before we get there. All right, so get me to the gap where you start working on a truck for him what what happened from then to then that way i could show that email about your show that he was pitching to you yeah so it was uh the end of may that he had sent me an email with this pitch for a show idea and this was may of 2020 yeah this was may of last year okay. um i was kind of dumbfounded i didn't think anything was real until i saw this email and i asked my wife susie i'm like oh my god this is this is real this guy really wants to do this show about us he came up with a name for the show um, that was Scrapped and Strapped, and this whole outline of how we were going to film the build of his truck. All right, let me bring the email up now. Um, so, and it might be small, so I'm going to read it. Um, so this is the email that Dimitri had sent um, Ken. um this was on may 29 2020 hey ken attaches a rough draft of your tr of your treatment for your show here are a few notes my goal is to come and live with you at the shop for about a month or so and you guys don't know this yet but dimitri had lived with them for quite a while um i'd be filming and capturing content relative to the episode you and i would work together to make sure the episode objective is what you want making sure we capture all the good stuff. The episode framework you'll read is just a starting point and we'll refine it to, to specific builds, events, etc. I will film, I will film, produce, post, edit, market, and pitch the show. I have my own equipment and will take care of everything. All you have to do is just be you. After we film for the first six episodes, we will launch your YouTube channel and release one episode per week. Um, after we after we get lots of views and traction, I'll pitch that show to a network. If this to uh, discovery, if you want, hold on. Let me get to the next one. Um, uh, discovery, if you want. In most cases, they will get, they will get rid of me and deal with you directly. This is a big tell. Um, in that case, I will be around to guide you through that. Should you want me to, otherwise, we can also keep it. 
uh, a YouTube series and you'll make money from advertising. We'd have a blast. P.S. You can name the show whatever you want, by the way. That name I simply came up with. Anyway, chat to you, my friend. I'm sure we have much to discuss. Um, and then, okay, we'll get to that. All right, so. So, um, I, you know, who doesn't want to have a show? Who doesn't want to advertise what they do? Uh, so him and I had a lot of phone conversations from that point forward until he got here uh, on the 1st of July uh, of 2020. And we were supposed to start filming a, a TV show. So, again, Dimitri has an overabundance of charisma. Uh, he really makes you feel like you're, you're somebody important, that you know, you're, you're his best friend in the world. Um, he had asked about just sleeping on the floor in the shop, throwing an air mattress in the shop. I, I can't do that. I, you know, I've known the guy for years online. I, we thought that we were pretty tight, so I said, hey, it's not much, but I can offer you my couch, which happens to be the couch that we're sitting on right now. Uh, so that's when Dimitri started to stay with us. Okay, so he first flew up to meet with you when? Was it Jan January? What? July. July 1st of 2020. Right, like so it's like two months after like the email, pretty much. Yeah. Oh, okay, well, really a month. That was, yeah. that was May 29th. Um, all right. So once he once he came up to you know stay with you start working so you were kind of sold on the idea that you were getting your own reality show yeah and and at the, we as Susie and I discussed it absolute worst case scenario we had one hell of an advertisement coming for for our business so and what did like you know um, how did he convince like you know we all know he's a charmer and he's very good at it um it was there more that he told you that wasn't in the email like saying like, yeah i'm gonna get you famous we're you know you're gonna be like on the right path you're gonna make millions we're all gonna laugh our ways <laughs> to the bank so there's uh we live in a very modest house there's no frills no flash to our house susie has her quote unquote dream house that she would drive by to take the kids to school every day and Somehow it got out to Dimitri that that was the house that she wanted. It was for sale. And by God, don't worry. When this show sells, you know, it's going to sell for a couple million dollars. You're going to have this couple million dollars. You can go and buy oh, whatever yeah. house you want. Oh, yeah. He was he was very much a big talker. He liked to build things up like that and make mm -hmm. you think that, um, you know, you're going to be famous and everything. And I didn't really buy into that. You know, I didn't expect much from the show. But, you know, I just let him have his, his day. I'm like, all right, you can, we'll, we'll just film. It can't hurt anything, right? So mm -hmm. um, I just figured it was just for fun. So I, you know, in another email, I had expressed to him what the truck was going to cost. My agreement to him was, as long as you are coming here to film a show, I will build your truck at cost. And you can see that in one of the other emails that I forwarded you. Uh, so there was no doubt, at least in our minds, this truck was not free to you. You were gonna, you're gonna pay for whatever the cost is. But my labor on that truck is nothing. Uh, just because, again, at worst case, I get a commercial for the for the shop. Best case, we get a show. Okay, so he gets there. It's uh, it's July first, and he's by himself, correct? Yes, I was just gonna say, just him, no, yep. no kids or no just wives. Him. And um, how far into him being there? uh do you start now is at, at that point do you start working on the truck so you know, yeah at that point in time we started to take down one of the trucks because i had purchased two trucks that were supposed to be converted into one for him uh so we started the dismantle process on one of them which you can see in the 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 short teaser clips that he actually did put out on youtube where we took we tore the truck apart um, so this truck that I, I paid a lot of money for now, no longer usable because we tore it down to be part of his, his build, but don't worry, I'm going to get paid for this. I am going to get reimbursed for this truck that we're tearing down by him. Going to buy the truck. Going to buy the truck. Now, at some point in his time here, he was here for two, three weeks, that first trip. Um, we had a conversation between him, Susie, and myself right here in the living room. 
where he had brought up, well, I'm going to be working to get sponsors for you. And that's going to bring stuff into your shop. So I'm not paying you for the truck. No, that's, that's not the agreement. I'm doing this build for you at cost. If you bring sponsors in, you bring stuff in, that's great, whatever. But that doesn't keep the lights on. We're doing that right. at cost no matter what. He was a little agitated by that because in his mind, he kept pointing out that he is a celebrity, uh, that he is going to be rolling up to the red carpet with this truck and getting out. And I kid you not, it was always, always guys like Shaq and Kanye. Yeah, you tell me on the phone like that, like, you know, he's going to be photographed with uh, Kanye. You would think that him and Kanye are the tightest two guys in the world. Where yeah, did he talking. say that him and Kanye like are thick as thieves, like that they're friends and buddies? No, the only person that he alluded to being friends with was Chris Brown because he lives in Chris Brown's mother's house. Oh, well, that's another uh, yeah. role model. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's <laughs> <a> model, right? <laughs> um, foreshadowing right there was completely and utterly lost upon me, I guess. Um, no, but he kept dropping names like this, that these guys were going to want to buy one of these trucks, and that meant that I was going to be busy, and I was going to be the premier, premier builder for people. Look, I don't build sports cars. I don't build Ferraris and Lamborghinis and stuff like that. I build ex-army trucks. I build ex-fire trucks. Guys like you know these celebrities that he keeps talking about, they aren't into these trucks. They don't have high-dollar stereo systems, and they aren't very comfortable and you can't just park them in your garage you know that these things are big right so um and just to clarify what it means um to build at cost because i saw a question about that yes it means that we don't charge anything for the labor um we only charge for purchasing the, the truck and the parts you know yeah. just the cost of actually doing it but no labor costs so that is what that means and i think i even told them that that build was still going to be around sixty thousand dollars they aren't cheap to build with what we were looking at doing with this particular right. bill and you know he so he's coming at, after you well, we're doing a youtube series all right let, let me um let me bring this up to clarify a couple of things so uh dimitri promised you you have your own show so, so let me bring this up um to, you know to really get you going i i would think to get you working on this truck mm -hmm. so you know you would do it uh so and I know it's tiny. I'll read it out loud. I'm sorry. Um, I still haven't figured out how to share a screen the right way. <laughs> uh, but uh, so the name of the show that Dimitri was trying to convince um, Ken and Susie to do is be called Ken Spencer, which is Ken right there, Scrapped and Strapped. Um, and this is what Dimitri was. Uh, showing him that this is going to be the show that you're going to be on tv for like you're going to you know what we were just talking about so executive producers ken spenson and of course dimitri snowden um producer dimitri snowden created by dimitri snowden um log line um buying military trucks headed for scrap and giving them uh new leases on life has just turned into a big business for the mv parts a store led by ken spencer the crew works hard and, and plays harder, and they trick out badass military trucks for hobbyists, first responders, and even celebrities like Dimitri. <laughs> um, sorry, I, I had to throw that in. No, uh, the only one. <laughs> Ken and crew do their best to build custom uh, military trucks while dealing with picky customers, tight deadlines, and dynamic personalities in the shop. Um, the genre is reality drama. Uh, oh, an hour long, 45 minutes. And then, like, you know, he gives, like, an episode list, ep episodes one through six. Um, then there's a season arc that Ken and crew will uh, be featured building trucks, interacting with customers, and dealing with each other's personalities over the course of the season. Um, the target age, 24 to 65. Income, 45,000 to 100K. Gender, male, and the distribution will be on YouTube. So this was the show that uh you know he was promising he'd start for you and also you know why what, what i read from the prior email is that you know if it's big he could he could pitch this to like discovery and then yeah. you network instead of just being on a youtube show 
right? And it, and it looked very professional and very impressive. And no, it does look very, pro I, um, you know, if I read that, I'd be like, oh my God, I'm getting a TV show. This right. Is crazy. Her and I, we had so many conversations about, is this real? Are, are we ready for this? I, look, I'm, I'm nobody that belongs on TV most likely, but it's, okay. who doesn't? Who doesn't want a, a, a cheap commercial? And when it came to build shows, I talked to quite a few of my buddies about this. And I'm like, hey, what do you think about it? And they said the same thing over and over. Every show is building pickups. Every show is building Jeeps. Every show is building hot dogs. Motorcycles. Nobody's you know. doing the military trucks. Nobody's doing the big trucks like this. So, yeah, everybody was, was on it. They wanted it. Yeah, it's very convincing. Okay, so he's a, he's, he comes in July um, by himself. Now, does he have, now, with the intention of filming your new reality show, right? right. Does he ever have a camera crew, uh, production? No. Is there anything? No, he's yep. got a nice camera with a tripod. I mean, he's he got has, some yeah. expensive equipment, but um, nobody else would. He him. used two cameras. He had, he had a Canon that had all the, the, you know, gear on it and the lights and the hand grips and all that stuff. And his iPhone, and he did a walk through of the shop once with the Canon, and once walk through the shop once with his iPhone. Showed me the video of both, and he goes, "Which one do you like better?" And he, oh, this one here looks really good, you know, compared to the other one. And he got a little upset about that because that was the one with his iPhone supposedly. So that's why from there on out, almost everything that he did film, which wasn't much, was filmed with an iPhone. Should have. Should have been a red flag. Yes, I cannot deny. I can. I can't read the questions over here on the side, but I guarantee you there's questions <laughs> coming up of how did you not see that was a problem? Hindsight. I have got the wonderful vision of hindsight right now. When you're living in it and the guy has an answer for everything, you don't see it. And I think it's also important to note that you know, you know, just speaking with Ari and all the other people who come forward, like you know. He's a charmer and oh he very much is anyone who's ever met him in person he can walk into a room and he he commands the attention of everyone in the room we have um a bunch of pictures of one time when we went out to eat with him and he was literally behind the bar mixing drinks and they were just eating up everything he had to say i still got the sombrero hanging up in my shop oh yeah they gave him the sombrero it was it was crazy he was just everybody just they're just drawn to him he has that magnetic personality so but anyway, back to the whole story. Um, so while he was at my shop, my house, there were many, many times that he would disappear and you'd find him outside pacing back and forth while I'm- Now, I think it's also important to note when he came in July, this is when he when he had been, um, not Vanessa, when he had Chrissy and Taylor. Correct. Okay. Chrissy, okay. So what most people don't understand and I, I've seen this because of the Facebook groups and Instagram and all that. But what a lot of these people don't understand, and I, I've got to try and get across to them, is when he came here in July of 2020, which you are seeing on Seeking Sister Wives Season 3 right now, was already done being filmed. It was overdone. So what you're seeing on TV now is over a year old. COVID was happening. They couldn't keep production going, whatever. So all of that that you're witnessing now, our understanding was that was already done, wrapped up, filming was over with. They were just waiting on post edit. So he honestly thought that his show was going back on the TV right away and wasn't getting postponed because of COVID. But while he was here, Ashley and Chrissy were back home in LA. And according to him and I, this was him telling me not what, what may or may not be true is that Taylor was already away from the family and living in Texas, and he was on the phone with her, breaking up with her, not her leaving the family, but him basically telling her that she needs to stay away. Um, and again, I there are certain things I can go into, and there's certain right. things I can't go into. And I'm not going to speak about Taylor's personal life or what it is that he told me about her personal life. I will discuss that with Taylor, and if she wants to share that, she can. No, that's that's very fair. Um, um, so he had told us, you know, when he came here, it was on a one-way ticket. When he went home, it was, again, on a one-way ticket. We had um, no idea when he was going to leave, when he came. No, but 
but he went home, he told us, because he had to go back home to work with TLC to film the quote unquote breakup scene with Taylor. So Okay, so um he, he came in July uh, July. Yep. Um when did he leave to, to film that breakup scene with Taylor? End of July. Okay, so he's only there for like about a month. Yeah, that, was that first go at it. It was about three, three weeks. About three weeks. Yeah. It was right in there. Um so he went back but he told us, I'm coming right back in a couple of weeks. I'm just going to go home for two weeks and I'll come back. Oh, okay. Well, then, oh, hey, I'm a first responder. So, you know, things are really bad here in California. So I have to stay here because I'm a first responder. First responding to what? Good question. He, he used that a lot. He told yeah. us all the time he was a first responder. We couldn't but, figure that but, out because, I mean, what, what job could he pass possibly hold as a first responder where he can come here for like three weeks and not mm -hmm. be working i don't understand what was he i mean it was is he a paramedic uh that's how he would try to pass himself money. off as but there, yeah. again gift to hindsight yeah i mean look at all the other nothing. claims he's made now i'm hearing about other things like he, he claimed to us that he was a fighter he told me he'd never lost a fight um so yeah, I, I had friends in the mma field yeah and we know we know now that that's not even but true. anyway so the time that he was gone supposedly he was still working on sponsorships for the show um i got text messages from him of various companies that this one's sending a check for 10 grand this one's sending a check for five yeah we're talking tens of thousands of dollars in just cash that was supposed to be coming um we were told that Ashley had not one, not two, but three or four miscarriages. And that, that was always leading up to why he couldn't come back. Uh, California was on lockdown and not letting anybody even leave their houses. So that's why he couldn't come back. Uh, but he did come back October-ish. Late October. I think it was October, late October that he, he had finally, California was opened up again and he could, he could come back. So he came in October. Mm -hmm. Um, we could start, you know, working on other projects because we weren't allowed to work on any projects that came in for the show, which by the way, all of the vehicles that came in because of this show idea, the scrapped and strapped show idea, I had to do at cost. We had to cut all the cost out of it and do everything with free labor because it's, that's how it's got to be done for the show. You'll get paid when the show sells. That's when everybody will and about, Okay. When he was saying that, oh, he's getting these ten thousand dollar checks from sponsors, and did he ever say like, oh, here's you know, here's a couple of bucks? If you're no, doing nothing. No, nothing. No, okay. it was more like let's go out to eat and you pay. Yeah, <laughs> like to McDonald's. Oh no. oh no! No 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 no! No, we've got we've got Japanese a... steakhouse or favorite hibachi place. Yeah. Was he yeah. paying for it? No. No. Oh, you were. He was our guest. We, we were paying pay. for him. Oh, so he's getting these checks for ten thousand dollars, five thousand dollars, whatever, and then and we, out of the goodness of his heart, he lets you take he lets you guys take him out to dinner to nice restaurants where you pay the bill. And you do the bill on his car. Almost every day we went out like that. Yeah, we spent so much money going out to eat and just Because you know, remember, he's a pescatarian. So that's there's right. Like, there's only certain things he can eat. Very specific diet. We're from Wisconsin. We live on beer, cheese, and bacon. You know, the things that he can't touch, supposedly. But one of his favorite, he had two favorite meals while he was here. Frozen Jack's cheese pizzas. Yep. Cheese, yes, pescatarian, not supposed to eat cheese. And deep fried Culver's cheese curds. Oh, yeah, so, he loved those. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we can put that, that whole uh, alkaline diet, whatever diet it is that they all talk about online. Mm -hmm. uh, that can go on hold while he's here in wisconsin we, we ended up buying a lot of groceries for him as well so mm -hmm. we were buying like the vegetarian burgers and the the no meat the beyond meat stuff occasionally you know? ashley would send him black beans cans of black beans from Whole food just some groceries or something and he wouldn't even touch them there'd be stacks and stacks of canned black beans so pretty much while he was there the whole time you were supporting him and feeding him yeah. unless like you know ashley sent like some black beans here and there yeah otherwise you guys were you were fully taking care of him correct yeah he was our guest and that's i felt like that was what we needed yeah. to do we had a guest in our house we were going to take him out show him a good time feed him you know that's kind of my responsibility we had another host. shelf added to our shower for him so he had his <laughs> own private shelf yes we did in the shower 
You guys are very accommodating. We, yeah. <laughs> we're Midwestern. That's what we do. We take care of us. I was going to get another one. I was going to get another one anyway, but I got two more. So of one. when he was Other back, one. when he was back here in that uh, that October November range, again he was here for a few weeks. Um, did almost no filming. Uh, at this point in time, we had to take over more space in the building that we rent because. Now we've got project vehicles here, which is way beyond the scope of anything I've ever done. All of these vehicles are being done at cost. Um, so I'm not making any money on them being parked here. Let me stop you before, but at this point, how much money would you say you've laid out to Dimitri? It's like October, right? Yeah. How, how much would you say you're out? Including meals? 60, some thousand, 70,000 at least. I mean, if you think about 70,000. Yeah. Yeah, because besides the, I mean, the meals. Remember, were I have, I have bought several trucks for him that were sitting there waiting to be built for him, just waiting on that check from him so I can start the build. Um, there was the food, there was the transport cost of bringing other vehicles here for the show. Um, yeah, there was a and lot. And when he came back in October, like, it was it still like like you know. Was he still talking about your 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 own reality show? Was he still filming anything with his iPhone? Like what was going on? There was again very little filming. Uh, most of the video, if you look at the YouTube channel that he had put out, most of the video there is video that I had supplied to him uh, through Dropbox. You, we had a Dropbox account, and he, I would supply the video that either I had taken, uh, that we had other people that would go on these outings with us or work in the shop, that they would take this video and we would drop it in the drop box and then he put together these little 30 second as he put it vignettes uh to drop online and we were supposed to be seeing one vignette every week teaser and i think there's five or six out there total since july of last year yeah um so when he you know he was here he filmed a couple of things he did more moving around of stuff in the shop kept talking about how he had locked in this vendor, that vendor, and this sponsor was sending us stuff, and this one was sending and us stuff. And they did. We got a lot of stuff. There, we got some stuff. A lot of the stuff that arrived at that point in time was first responder gear because he had contacted all of these com companies and told them he was a first responder, that this truck was being built for him to work as a first responder in California, um, that he was going to use this truck to fight wildfires in California. So he was given all kinds of medical equipment, uh, a couple of electric bikes, because you could drive these electric bikes into the forest to retrieve people that were lost or hurt. Um, he was working with other companies to get things like winches and LED light bars. And then came along a big company known as 511 Tactical. Uh, he sold them on the idea of, Send me all of this fabric. We're going to do interiors with your fabric. And we'll make this whole new thing. Now, he had expressed it to me as though, hey, Ken, your shop is going to be the home of 511 Automotive. It doesn't exist. You're the guy. You're the place that it comes from. Oh, okay, that's cool. That's something new. Well, then it quickly morphed into he's got a tag that he had made up and put on one of these seats that I found the upholsterer to make with his name on it. And he's creating a whole business in my shop that he's not paying any rent for to sell these seats and telling me that, yeah, well, you can get like 10% of whatever, you know, whatever. Oh, oh 10% whatever I sell, generous of him. Yeah, I can get 10% of whatever I sell. Wait, well, you're doing this in my shop and now, 511 sent four rolls of fabric. In his mind, he had Susie calculate, okay, a bag from 511 that's two to $300 to buy one of their backpacks, he assumed it uses about a yard of fabric. So therefore, a yard of fabric must be worth two to $300 because that's the cost of a bag. Well, you've got several hundred yards of fabric, so that worked out to $90,000. So there, $90,000, you got $90,000 in fabric, I don't have to pay for my truck. But well, what are you going to do with said fabric? Right. right? What happened with said fabric is he gave it all to the upholsterer 
to make these seats that he was then going to be sending out to other companies to say, hey, look at the stuff that I make. You can buy from Dimitri because it has Dimitri's tag on it. So you want to use fabric that came in on a sponsorship deal to create a business under your name. So sponsorship deal for Scrap and Strap under Ken Spencer's name somehow flows to Dimitri to become his new business ran out of my shop. But, but I pay for it. Yeah. I mean, when you think about it in hindsight. Oh, and it just the very last time that he left, he's still into the upholsterer for I don't know how much money. And the upholsterer has seats of mine that I can't get back until I pay Dimitri's debt. Because everything was done under my name. Mm. So anyway, he goes home for Christmas because he's got to be home for oh, they Christmas. Don't really celebrate holidays. No, they don't celebrate holidays. But okay, he gets, so he came in October. So was he there for like another month? Like he was there in May? No, two, three weeks. Or July, week. rather. Yeah, just two, three weeks, and then he was okay. Home. Um, so now we're talking about okay, he's going to come back in January, and the idea is, hey, do you mind if I come back in January and I want to bring my wife Chrissy? She's going to stay for a week, go home, reacclimate with the kids for a week. And then Ashley's going to come out for a week. Dude, this is cool. You know, I get to meet Ashley. I get to meet Chrissy. Oh, yeah. We were excited you about know, that. And let me just show some pictures real quick. So um, and they do come. So this is Dimitri in your living room, I guess, watching himself on TV. Oh, yeah. That was uh, uh, you know, that was his visit in July. That Oh, that was July? Yep. yep. That was, like I guess, during like, – oh, is that Vanessa? Yeah, okay. That's an old, that's an old one. Yeah, I had to, I had to now, watch the show because I hadn't seen it before. Funny story about this picture right here. Um, our son, Forrest, has Asperger's. And Forrest, just like me, not impressed. unimpressed by everything and anything. So Forrest, we, we dragged him out of his room like, hey, come down here. Come here, check this out. And we said, hey, Forrest, who is that on TV? And he looks at the TV and – yeah, yeah, okay, it's Dimitri. Um, so you know who's on TV. You don't, you don't think that's kind of cool? He goes, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you would think that somebody just kicked Dimitri's dog across the street. Oh, yeah, he yeah was, that probably just played his ego real, real bad. Oh, yeah. Oh, he was so disheartened because a, a 15 year old boy, 14 year old boy at that time, just Not was impressed. so under impressed by him, Mr. Celebrity. Yeah. It was. Awesome. Yeah. Well, he is a celebrity. Listen, he parties with Kanye. So then we have, yeah. uh, we have that. That's Chrissy on your couch with one of your kitties. Oh, yep. she loved my cats. Oh, did she, she loves our cats. And then we have um, that's that's I guess Dimitri on. Yeah, watching, watching the show. Watching, okay. I thought the show. We oh, that watching. yeah, we were watching Letter Kenny. Yeah, we were sure. watching another show, introducing him to a show that we like to watch. So, okay, so Chrissy and Dimitri come. Um, it's January. Yeah, it was January walk, walk us through it. Fourth. Yeah, January fourth they came. Yep. Um, and immediately Chrissy was like, I mean, the sweetest woman you will ever meet in your life. She is so sweet. I that mean, woman is so enough. real. She is so honest and good. There that that woman is pure of heart of everything. Yes. And I'm telling you I she adore her. I mean, she was and she yeah. was always so thankful and sweet and yes. oh thank you for having me and everything and she just she just was the sweetest girl yeah and how long was chrissy up there with with Tini? 10 days yeah it was supposed to be a week but it was about 10 days and we were so sad when she left so susie and chrissy were, were truly like sisters how would how did they treat each other like in your company what, interesting. You know, oh it? so susie and i had many conversations about this at night when we'd go to bed because nobody had any privacy, right? You're living in a house together. They're in our living room yeah. on an air mattress. Um, we did not think that it was going to last. We told each other that. We felt bad for that. Um, I, When we would go out to eat, because, again, remember, we had to go out every day. Um, so when we go out to eat, Dimitri would... Wait, you literally went out to dinner every night? Yeah. For quite a while. At the, very, at the end of it, in the last... Last month or so, we didn't go yeah. out as much. But, but yeah, Dimitri would dictate to her what she was or was not allowed to eat. Because Chrissy is a very small-framed girl. He can't risk her not being a small-framed girl. She told me she lost a lot of weight since she moved in with them. Yeah. Had to. Because Must she, be that alkaline diet. 
Oh, that's something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, while Chrissy was here, she towards the end she was having very bad feminine um, issues, and I came walking in the living room as he was holding a bottle of Tylenol, and I, I very distinctly heard him telling her, "Here, you are allowed to have one, and that is it." I mean, he was very stern with her, and did, again told her what medicine she was allowed or not allowed or how much of it she was allowed to have. I, John, was, I understand maybe you don't know a whole lot about women. I, guess. I don't, but I can understand. I, I've been around them. Uh, <laughs> so like, uh, I'm sure not going to tell my wife, well, well, that's going on. Here you go, <laughs> honey. You can have one Tylenol. I would have kicked them to the curb. And that's it. No more. Uh, it was just very controlling. I did not, we, let's be clear, Susie and I did not witness any physical No physical abuse. abuse. We did not witness anything like but that. But what we did witness, I would very much say, was psychological abuse. Very controlling. Very controlling very behavior. Controlling. And she, and Chrissy is so sweet and, and almost meek and very mild, meek. you know? So it's like, I feel like she was an easy victim for him. She just wanted to please him. She wanted to make him happy. And she was just doing whatever ever she could to make him mm -hmm. happy. And it was, it just, it kind of broke my heart to see that. She absolutely loved the cats. She missed her cats back home. And Dimitri had told her she wasn't allowed to Dimitri have a cat. Dimitri told her she was not allowed to have any animals. Yeah, I convinced her. We also have animals. sugar gliders. Uh, she loved the, she just loved the animals. You can tell a person's soul, in my opinion, you can tell a person's soul by the way that they treat animals like this. Oh, yeah. And by God, she was just, she loved our cats. She loved our sugar gliders. We even had a turtle that was still alive back then, and even that was great. Yeah. For oh her. yeah, she just loved all the animals. But um, so Chrissy, we dropped her off at the airport. She flew home, and it was a couple of days later that he came to me in the shop and pointed out that Chrissy left. Yeah, right. I was like, "What do you mean?" I was yeah, like, like yes, yeah. yeah. We dropped her off at the airport, you know, just a day or so yeah. ago. He goes, "No, she got home. She grabbed her kids." And she ran out the gate of the house. Now, the way he described it, their house is gated somehow. I don't know. He, he made it sound like the driveway was gated or whatever. Um, but that she ran out the house with the kids. Ashley tried chasing her down, but Ashley's naked, which kind of caught me off guard because I didn't realize at that point in time they literally never wear clothing at home. Um, and... Phone calls. You walked in oh God, I walked on too many phone calls where I saw Ashley. You know, maybe you helped Chrissy because maybe she saw what a loving couple should be, like you and your wife Susie, and maybe she got on the plane and she goes, I need to get the fuck out of here. You know? <laughs> we 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 honestly thought that maybe she went back, back to South Africa. Again, without even reading the comments here on the side, I just I saw what all the trolls were saying about Chrissy online and especially with her her GoFundMe page that y'all set up. Chrissy would love to go back home to South Africa. What you buffoons don't understand is that South Africa is still under lock and key for COVID. Very little has been reopened to travel back to South Africa. I know this because in our shop, we have a container full of vehicles and parts that have been waiting to go to South Africa for over a year so to all these people that are out there saying oh just fly back home oh go to your embassy this is free this is cheap when no. a country is closed due to a pandemic whether you want to believe the pandemic is real or not i don't want to get into the politics of it i don't care the country is closed and at this point in time chrissy married dimitri she is now a legal u.s citizen she relinquished her citizenship to South Africa. South Africa, South, their embassy doesn't care because you're an expat now. You mean nothing to them. So for all of you trolls out there that want to question why she can't just go back, why does she need $10,000? She literally has to re-immigrate to her own country of birth. Yeah, she, and she has nothing, and she has two children that she's supporting. 
And you and I just to be clear, her kids weren't with you when she came up. She no, just, no, no, when she no. came up. And there's much more to the GoFundMe than that. You know, she I don't want to say where she is because I know, no. but you know, no. it's a less than stellar situation. Exactly. I'll just say that. Um, and what other people don't realize too is that that less than stellar situation is coming to an end in about two weeks when she has already been asked to leave. Yeah. So that less than stellar situation is going to get even worse. Yeah. yeah I mean, she has, you know, a, a countdown to where she is, which yeah. is not great. And uh, if she was anywhere near us, you know, I'd take her in in a heartbeat. Honestly. But I mean, I mean, honestly, it's that again, that woman was the salt of the earth. So, OK, yes. Dimitri came to me in the shop and said she left, you know, and it just it blew our minds. We didn't know what he was talking about. Within minutes of him telling me that she was gone, he had a stack of papers in his hand. I don't know where they came from. Did he go up to my office and print them? Did he go to somebody else's office and print them? I don't know. But what that stack of papers was, was Chrissy's entire phone record. Every number that she was calling, every number she was texting was on that list. And I should have seen it then. Hindsight, again, being what it is, I should have seen it. He came after me and he said, Susie's number is on this list. You better come clean with me right now about why she's talking to Chrissy. I'm like, what, what are you talking about? You know, I don't. How did you get somebody's phone records? I don't even know how this is done. I well, he had, he, I'm assuming that he had, like, you know, Chrissy's phone in his name. He had access yeah. to everything. Yes. We, we discovered that later. We didn't know that. But so I called Susie and I said, hey, something's going on. I explained to her, you know, again, she was dumbfounded that Chrissy left. She had no idea. Um, all of the messages that Susie had been sending Chrissy were picture pictures of our cats chrissy asks for them all the time she loves to see her cats so i just send her pictures cute pictures of cats i mean it's it's nothing chrissy was staying on her couch or uh, in an air mattress in our yeah, living room the they'd be sitting on the couch next to each other sharing pictures of the cats that were in the same room as them <laughs> so yeah so yeah um and just so just to be clear when you know that happened dimitri believed that susie had something to do with that was yeah. the accusation. That was the oh, accusation. I actually, us. and at that time, I actually showed him the text that I had sent Chrissy that said, um, it basically said, I don't know what's going on with you right now. I'm, I just want you to know that you can talk to me if you, if you need anything. I did send out a message like that after I had found out that she had left, Which but Chrissy I didn't get never any, responded I never to. got a response to it, but that was the only message I had sent, um, since I found out that she'd left him, well, him and Ashley. Yeah. So that's. That's all I had said. And then after about a day where he had been calling and texting nonstop to her and she wasn't responding, that's when he had, he was so proud of himself that he had turned off her phone and turned off her access to the world. That this so-and-so, you know, she's out there on her own now. See how she likes it. We were told that she had left some, as he put it, some form of Dear John letter complaining that I, you know, yeah, the letter said that I gave Ashley a thousand dollars for her kids, and I only gave Chrissy two or three hundred dollars for her kids. Come to find out what we didn't know up until that point in time, because you spend a lot of time with somebody and you see them at their absolute bottom moment, they let a lot of things slip. Ashley, uh, Chrissy was given an allowance by him of what she was allowed to have. All of her money, all of her financial resources were turned over to Dimitri. And just for the people in the comments, I see there's like a, just to set this straight, uh, there's people talking about like uh, South Africa and whether she's a citizen or not. Um, they did get married. I don't think that she's uh, a U.S. citizen yet. I'm sure her marrying a U.S. citizen probably did not help her South African citizenship. Yeah. You know, we're not. Yeah, never mind this man. We're not like, you know, we don't work for immigration. Uh, but she needs to help because she's here and she's got things going on and she's and she's in a limited she has a limited time to uh where the place she's at now which is not great so no. that that's it and then you know dimitri just filed a uh, divorce against her so whether you know she can go back to south africa there's COVID restrictions i mean things change daily but you know the point is is that she's here now 
she's in hiding. She doesn't have any money. Um, and that's why she needs to help. And then like two weeks, she'll be pretty much out on the street. So yeah. that's the point. Um, and let's not try to harp on, you know, whether she's a citizen of here or, or there or not, that's why she needs help. Not Bottom line, if she needs help. So, Sorry, go ahead. so Ashley, of course, never made it um, because, well, there was nobody to watch the kids. Yeah, so we didn't um, get to meet Ashley. She was supposed to come and while Chrissy was staying with the kids. Yeah. And at this point, things really began to start to go off the rails with Dimitri. There was no filming happening. Um, there wasn't a very beginning, but not yeah. at this point. At this point in time, filming had all but stopped. Um, he was just kind of moving things around in the warehouse. He was pushing his own business idea. Um, there was some app that he was supposed to be working on for bed bugs or something like this that he was constantly. And this is this is so. And for the people in the chat, he came in January. Now he stayed with you up until April a yeah. month ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's is. not. We're not just talking about like a week or two. You know, Chrissy was there for like ten days. You said. But yeah. Dimitri was there from January till just a few weeks ago, and he right. left in April. He went home for one week around his birthday at, uh, in January. Oh, yeah, in 25th. January. He left for one week, celebrated his birthday, saw Ashley, and came right back. Yeah. So other than that one week, he was with us from January 4th till April, April 17th. 17th, I think. Something like that. Yeah. Um, In February, that's when things got real ugly around here. Uh, once again, he approached me about giving him these two trucks for, for nothing. I told him, no, we had already discussed this back in you know, July when you were here. Uh, again, he kept throwing out the idea of, well, I got you sponsorships in here. We got Milwaukee Tool. We got this one. We got that one. And I said, doesn't matter. That's not what keeps the lights on. That was never the agreement. He goes, well, I'm not telling you to give me a truck. I worked for it. No, I gave you the contacts of who to call. You made some calls, but oh, he did not make the initial contact with these oh. companies. There was another individual that he was using this person's name and identity under a fake email to say, hey, I work for executive producer Dimitri Stoden. We want to talk to you about how you can give us stuff and you can get advertised on this TV show. So he'd make the initial contact and he through said, somebody else. And he always said, oh, nobody real. wants to, nobody thinks that an executive producer is going to call them first. It has to be my fake assistant. But don't worry, my fake assistant is actually a real person. She's going to come and stay here for a while. According to him, she was going to be another wife. And, oh, yeah, she's also a producer already for Netflix. She is not a producer for Netflix. She is a happily married woman of 11 years and not looking to share. And yes, I've been in contact with her and I can't share too much of her story because again, it's just one more person that's coming after him now. Um, now at some point, I have two questions. Um, so <laughs> while, while he's there from January to April, was he still, were you guys still under like the illusion that you were going to get some show? Was he still, was he still saying that like, oh, you're going to get your, you know, your truck show, your truck show and like, you know, keep, keep spending money and, you know, so and the other. It had devolved from, we're going to get a show to, well, I'm not promising you a show. Um, I'm just promising you that we're going to produce it. I don't know that it'll be a show, but we're just going to produce it and we'll see what happens from there. Well, again, you have to be taking video to have something to produce. Um, and I want to, I really want to go back to that point of in February, this man came after me physically. I watched the switch flip on this guy, like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. He came charging at me, arms spread wide, screaming to the point where people, our building, we have eight, 30,000 square feet of a 200 some thousand square foot building. People on the other side of the building that is over two blocks long heard him screaming at me. I've got the text messages from him the next day apologizing that maybe I shouldn't have raised my voice at you. Dude, you were straight up screaming. I tried to leave the situation, he blocked me. And what was the, what was the cause of his? Uh... Because I wasn't willing to give him these two trucks. 
because we hadn't started building this truck yet. I need money to build the truck. No money, no truck build. We don't just give anybody anything. Yeah, we don't have it to give. We were busy doing the builds, the other builds, and trying to film them for the show. The builds that we had gotten through. This and you never, he, he never got, did he ever get any truck from you? No. Okay, well, at least. I am one of the lucky ones that never signed anything. Yeah, but you're also out, what, 70000 due to all Oh, that was at that point in time. We're, we're more now, because remember, that was only until October. Now when the guy. Oh, started, okay, so how much money are you out of pocket now? I'm gonna guess well over a hundred. Jesus Christ! Because is that even including the dinners and like you know, well, so that and some and of the stuff like that. Some of the sponsorships that he had brought in supposedly was, hey, here's fifty thousand dollars worth of equipment, but you have to pay twenty thousand. Oh, well, I don't need this stuff. Oh, you you need it because it, it's a sponsorship. It's a great deal. We got to take it. So now you spend twenty thousand dollars to buy welding equipment that you don't need, but because you're getting a thirty thousand dollar discount, well, you have to take it so we can film it, and then they're part of the show. And and next season, season two, they're going to give you. Stuff. So we were spending money that we don't have hand over fist to buy into this stuff because, as he liked to put it, you have to pay to be on TV. You have to pay to be on TV. So, and again, I thought I was getting paid for his truck. I never did. Okay, so <laughs> at some point, I'm just, um, just remembering what we spoke about. Um, I feel like, were, were, were you losing faith in your whole truck show at some point? Because doesn't, yeah. doesn't oh, yeah. you then circle back to that, how we can get you on Seeking Sister Wives as a couple? Oh, oh, you oh, want to go back to that? Okay. This, this is now this is gold right here, guys. Listen to this. So, okay, go ahead, spill it. Okay, so Dimitri had approached Susie and I about being on the show Seeking Sister Wives as though we were looking for another wife, which we're obviously not. We're not. That's that's not our lifestyle. Hey, you do you, do what you're gonna do, rock right. on. That's not us, though. Um admittedly yeah if we were younger we could honestly see benefits to that but no <laughs> the mechanics but um yeah, no. so the selling point was one of our favorite restaurants um i'm a creature of habit go to the same place over and over because i like to know who's making my food um one of our waitresses is an awesome young black girl she's in her 20s she's got a marketing degree she's nice as can be super sweet super That's sweet cool. gets along with our family sits down at our table with us while we're having our dinner has her own dinner with us whatever oh, yeah. right hey guys tlc is interested in you to be on seeking sister wives because you will be the first interracial couple polygamous. or polygamous couple group, group. Yeah, on family. the show because we're going to get this girl and i'm leaving her name out of it we're going to get her who's by the way half your age yeah half my age to sign on and do this. We had, mostly he had lengthy conversations with us and this girl while we were sitting down to dinner about, look, it's 7,500 bucks an episode. You, Which you, I don't believe, but go ahead. I, I, I believe you, I don't believe that. Yeah, anyway. so. yeah. He says it's 7,500 bucks an episode, take the money and run. You just can't tell anybody that it's fake. TLC doesn't care. They want it because I told them all about you they know about you guys and you're going to be the first interracial i mean it's going to be huge it's going to blow up oh, yeah. and what 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 month is this oh this year was back in november yeah uh, october, november then. when he was here yeah back then okay. was really talking about it i was not so at that show. point he was no. pit, not only pitching your own your own truck show but then the, the also the possibility that you could be cast members on seeking sister wife but but he made it clear to us he couldn't promote the Scrapped and Strapped project as him having anything to do with it because TLC would drop him. He, he's not allowed to be a part of any other project. So therefore, if we were to agree to do the Seeking Sister Wives deal, we couldn't have the Scrapped and Strapped deal because TV doesn't allow you to be on two different shows at the same time. According to him. According to him. So that was his reasoning as to why he could never... If you look through Dimitri's feed, you will not see any mention of Scrapped and Strapped or me anywhere 
and it, that's that was his reasoning is because well TLC I they won't allow me to do that I can't be involved in another project even though he was going to be the EP and uh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Business card made and everything. So in February, when he came after me like that, that was when I realized I needed to step back. When you live in a situation, um, you don't really see what's happening. I call it being frogged. You know, you drop a frog in a pot of water and you slowly turn up the heat. Um, what probably a hundred ninety some odd percent of your your group watching doesn't know. I also have Asperger's. I, in one of the, the side of the, the things that you deal with with that is obsessiveness. I work seven days a week, 12 hours a day. Holidays, birthdays, doesn't matter. I work. Last year, 2020, I took five days off the entire year. That means that's only five days, weekends, holidays, everything included in that. It's only five days that I did not go to my shop. So in February, after he came after me, I stayed home for, what, three days yeah. straight. That that was when Susie started to realize something, something's going on, something's not right. I literally stayed in my room and binge watched some TV and just kept telling everybody I was sick. Um, I didn't know how to tell her. I was still. What was going on? I didn't. I didn't really know what was going through his head at that point. I tried to give her some idea of what was going on, and it's not that it's not that she doesn't believe me. It's just she had never seen this side of him. This side of him where he was just downright vindictive, mean, and just no, just devoid of any well emotion or rational thought. It's just my way, or we're going to have a problem. I mean, let's let's the impression that I had of him was he would text me out of nowhere and say, I just want to thank you for all you do and mm -hmm. and how are you doing today and just checking on you. He called me beloved. He would, I mean, he was just, he would never walk in a door in front of me, always ladies first. He was just like ridiculously charming. I had never seen him lose his temper. So to hear him saying, hear Kenny saying things about how we just need to get away from this guy. And I'm like, why? I mean, what's going on? I don't I don't understand. I mean, I knew there were some things that were kind of weird. Um, I do remember through the whole, um, since January when he was there with us for like three months, I remember thinking, you know, how is Ashley okay with being left home with her three small children, especially after Chrissy had left? So I kept asking him, I'm like, how's Ashley? Is Ashley okay? Does she need anything? You know, and he's he was always like, nope. She's good. She understands. This is just what we need to do right now for the show. And it just, it, that part didn't make sense to me. I, I thought that was just very strange that he would leave her. So he was trying to buy you two. That's what it was. He, he yeah. needed you, Susie, on his good side. That was, way. Yeah. He was so looking at renting apartments up here. He oh, was yeah. looking at buying a house because according to him, their rent back in LA is $6,000 a month. I think he said 8,000 actually. No, he always, he always told me six. I know, it's but ridiculous. It's like, well, how are you paying that? Oh, I, I sell these apps that I create and yeah, I never really fully understood what he did for a living. No. Now I do. He's a con artist. But, um, so that was when I realized in February that, okay, something, this is not real. This is not right. We, we have to get out of this, but, where again, I can only guess that everybody out there is saying, well, just kick the guy out, get rid of him, send him packing. What you don't know is that Dimitri was very clear to me that he was trying to have Ashley send his firearms from California to Wisconsin. At the time, I did not know that he was a convicted felon. All I knew is that he had firearms that he was trying, he, he told us he was going to have her ship them here because they were non-California compliant. And I said, you can't. Why would he need firearms if he's staying in your house? Good question. I've got the messages from him, though, asking me to get him a gun. Which, no, I never gave him a gun. Um, but, yeah, so I don't know. Does the guy have firearms? Does, what is this guy capable of? My family is here in this house in this situation. And my family, unfortunately, at the time, had not seen that side of him and didn't fully buy into it. So if I tell the guy to leave, my family could overrule me and say, no, you're going, he's staying. And then I know that they're in real danger. 
but the guy is also in my shop and for all I know has a loaded gun behind me at all times. We don't know. I mean, we were so close with him at one point that we would jokingly call him um, your brother, brother, dad. brother, husband, brother, dad, you know, just joking around. Our 16 year old daughter was supposed to go to LA with him over spring break. She's always because wanted she's to go always to LA. wanted to go to LA. She was going to go. She was going to fly back with him and, and stay for a little while with Ashley and the kids. And thank God that didn't happen now. Yeah. Thank like, Oh Lord. I just so here's even. the other thing. I, I don't know to this day when and where did he use my name? Was my name ever put out there to these companies? Were there loans taken out under my name, under my business name? Did he ever have like your social security number? No. I, oh, well, not that I, I never I don't know. I don't know. I like to think not. The guy you run any credit checks, like, you know, since this has all happened to make sure like you don't have like 25 loans or whatever out in your name? I, I do know my, I do know my credit score. I check it every week. But no, we it have has, not. Does not appear to be affected at this point? What we have noticed is I had sent him a registered letter that re he received. Certified. Certified, yeah. I'm sorry, uh, last week. Ever since that day, um, my computers, which he had access to, my phone, which he had access to, are acting up rather strangely. And somebody keeps trying to access my Facebook account multiple times a day um, since that letter was received. And that was the letter you posted um, on the... Um, oh, no, that... Okay, so that that yeah, I, I should have included that. Let me find it real quick. The press release I had to do because again, I don't know what companies he has approached with my name. I found out after he was gone that this other individual he was using her information to contact these companies, and she never knew about it. Um, so we don't know who's coming after us for what right now. We still don't know, and I needed to get something out there for the attorney that uh yes yes one of our cats um we needed to get something out there for the attorney to start letting these companies know because we don't know who was all contacted that no you really don't have any dealings with me or yeah. my business i'm going to send this i'm going to put this in my keep talking i'm i'm, I'm yep. going to no worries. Press release up. Yeah, the certified letter was different that so, was directly to dimitri so i had to wait for dimitri to sell a city bus that he had in our shop. Mm -hmm. I had to wait for him to sell that damn bus because before he could afford to go home. Uh, where everybody says, oh, the guy is worth a couple million bucks. He doesn't have dime one. I'm sure he gets it when he comes. And like when he was there, you know, what if he had any money, how did he get it? Like, you know, if he, and he was there for quite, you know, but four month stretch, did he, did he rely on you for everything? Like, you know, he would sometimes once in a while, he would buy food, his own food, but yeah, he would buy some stuff with a credit card. Otherwise, if you were to look at my, um, my DoorDash account, oh, yeah. I mean, every day I was buying lunch. Oh, and the quick trip fish sandwiches. And the quick they, trip they fish sandwiches. I had to go there every day. Susie would go there every I'd day. I'd call them ahead to make sure they would make the fish sandwiches for him because he loved their fish sandwiches. So I'd walk in and they'd know. They'd be like, here you go. <laughs> so, yeah, there there was no money. He would occasionally take on an odd construction job with a guy that is part in, in our building um, just to have some form of cash. And I, again, he, according to what I found, you know, what, what I – knew is he was just trying to get the money together to fly back home to LA because here's the press release um I haven't posted but again it's tiny so I'll read it sorry I didn't um uh MB parts store you know Ken Spencer regarding Dimitri Seneca Snowden um Dimitri Seneca Snowden uh is no way shape form affiliated with MB parts store or its owner Ken Spencer Dimitri does not speak for or do business on behalf of MB Part Store. Any business deal or arrangement made between you, your business, your group, your association, your etc., is not made with MB Part Store. Regarding scrap and strap, that was the show that you were supposed to get from him. The, <coughs> excuse me. The production uh, known as scrap and scrap was not authorized for MB Part Store or its uh, owner Ken Spencer. And then MB Parts Store is a business. MB Parts Store is an online business dedicated to providing parts for ex-military and fire trucks. At our location, we service and build military vehicles for private collectors, businesses, and government agencies. Mm -hmm. 
so yes there was a lot of confusion about why that press release was put out there it had to get put out there because i don't know what businesses had my name associated with any money that was sent again we're talking tens of thousands of dollars that he sent me messages about from these other companies that they were sending a check i never got those checks so is somebody coming after me now to look for that money i don't know the companies that did send stuff the first responder type gear that we have no need for no nothing were there other companies that were reached out to were there other companies that were promised something there were no arrangements made between me and those companies i asked him after this disagreement in february who has my name who knows that i even exist oh they all know you exist don't even worry about it no i there's no contracts between him and I, there's nothing. So I don't have, I, I never gave him any authorization to use my name, to use my business name, anything. So it had to get put out there to any potential company that he worked with that no, your agreement is not with me. I've never signed anything to any business out there that he may or may not have contact. We're just trying to kind of protect our butts here because we don't really know what he did. So it was after this happened in February, we got word from him that Chrissy filed a restraining order. He gave us one specific date, which was a date in our home that Chrissy and him would have been in our home, sleeping on an air mattress. According to him, it was on that date in question that him and Chrissy were in our house that Chrissy woke up, claims to have woken up to him beating her head on a headboard. Now, we they were on an air mattress. There is no headboard. I did not see the restraining order. There's one date in question that he's telling me everything was about this one date. He handed up, her and I both, three pages. You guys have to sign this. You have to fill this out and sign it. What is this? Well, it proves I'm innocent. I'm sorry, I signed nothing. My attorney gets any paperwork that somebody sends me like that to sign. That upset him greatly, that I would not sign this until it went to my attorney. He said it was going to, it was supposed to prove his innocence. Um, he had called Chrissy all sorts of names. Um, and honestly, at that point in time, he is very good at playing the wounded bird. Um, we actually started to feel bad for the guy because we thought there's a false accusation of abuse all because of a headboard, air mattress not having one, happened in our house. No, this- And how this, dare she make this claim in right, my house? Right, this couldn't have happened. This didn't happen. But then I got to thinking more and more about my situation with him in February. Why did Chrissy leave the way that she did? Why did Vanessa leave the way that she did? Was the stories I was told about Taylor from him true? What's going on here? So that's when I finally really started to realize something is drastically wrong. If here in Wisconsin, there's a website from the state of Wisconsin that I can log into. I can type in somebody's name and I get all the court records from them in the state of Wisconsin. So if I wanted to look up Susie, I can type her name in and boom, there's everything associated with the Susie Spencer. Which, by the way, there's a couple others out there, so it was really weird when I saw a bunch of stuff that I knew. It was like, hey, where, when were you up there? Um, I can't do that with California residents. California, when I looked into it, you have to pay some kind of a subscription fee to be able to get these court records. I don't know what I'm looking for. I'm starting to really not trust the guy, so is there a restraining order in place or isn't there? What is he I Googled about? restraining order in his name. There's nothing out there. So what's going on? And he was still on, in our living room. And he's still time. in our living room. So wow. a, about a, a week before he left is when I started my communications to TMZ. And I started typing and I deleted. I'd start typing and I deleted. I knew he was going home, but I didn't know when. I'm telling you, I was afraid for my life from this guy. I had to wait until I got the message from him that he had landed in LA. And that is when I made the call to TMZ and said, look, I've got this story, I've got this information. And they're like, well, what do you expect to get paid? I said, only thing I want 
is I want a copy of that restraining order. I, I don't want your money. I don't want nothing. I just I need a copy of that restraining order. So they they agreed to that. They put the story out there. I got the copy of the restraining order, which I believe I emailed over to you, but whatever. In which case, Susie and I sat down and read it. And we saw that, no, it wasn't about one date in question. There were other times. There was incidents. multiple dates, multiple incidences of, of violence towards her. Um, and even and I should point out, that. before he left here, he had told me, and he told Susie, that Ashley was leaving him. That she wanted a minimum of a year separation, which Susie thought was funny because they're, they're not, not even married. married. Um, and the message that I got from him when he landed in L.A. was that she's gone. No, he said they're gone. Or they're gone. They're gone. So meaning, she, meaning her so and the kids, kids were gone. Now, again, I've seen this guy try and play on heartstrings. I've seen him play the wounded bird. I yeah, know that me. according to him, him and Ashley are no longer together. Now that was him to me. He could have been just trying What I thought to was really funny is that her birthday was, was what April twenty fifth, and on Instagram, oh my God, they were all lovey dovey message, you know, post back and forth. It seemed so. Yeah, it seemed like it they weren't really apart, but according yeah. to him, Ashley left with the kids and wanted to be gone from him for at least a year. So, do you know if if Ashley and his kids are there in LA right now, or if they're, if they're still split? I no honestly idea. don't know. I I cut all communication as soon as I got that message from him. I never responded to anything from him. Yeah. I had witnessed phone calls between him and Discovery Channel Legal when Chrissy first left. Between him and Discovery Channel Legal when the restraining order came out, and he came out of those phone calls each and every time with the feeling and and the the the, the air of, in, of being untouchable. He made it clear. That he was discovery that him and Ashley, they were TLC's cash cow. They could do no wrong, and that TLC and Discovery Channel were going to give them their own show. That you know, there was no way that TLC and Discovery would ever drop them. That Discovery Channel's lawyers were going to bury the such and such Chrissy. Um, that she's full of it, man. And you know, in this world, you know, it, the way that he spoke about her the way that he had spoke about what he could get away with um you you thought this guy was don corleone that he no one in the world could touch him ever i i will tell you right now the main reason that i put this out there the main reason i went to tmz the main reason i started talking to ari i i had talked to ari before her for, first interview with you i was her undisclosed location or whatever I had to make sure that this guy was stuck in LA and unable to come back because I will tell you as, as long as this day is, I am fearful of him coming back to Wisconsin and har harming me or my family. And he was having legit panic attacks, Kenny was. And the problem is Dimitri is very smart. He does not put his threats in words, you know, on, on, in, in, writing. in writing. He straight up tells you what he is capable of he straight up tells you this stuff so there's no record of it there's no nothing you know so i can't show you a text message where the guy came after me and threatened me i can show you a text message from him where Apologize. he apologizes for raising his voice but that's it there's no details He's very careful calculated He's beyond calculated wow. so so yeah even now i waited to come out with everything until there was a registered letter sent to him to tell him you're not welcome here. Um, <laughs> no. Um, uh, I had to wait until I felt there was enough public information out there that there was enough people coming after him legally that he couldn't afford to get back to Wisconsin for sure to do harm to me or my family. Yeah, he, he, and didn't you have to buy his plane ticket back home? No, he had to wait until he sold the city bus because before he could afford. Oh, that's the the bus. That's right. But now I've got the upholsterer coming after me because he had promised to pay the upholsterer and didn't. I've got other uh, tenants of the building where my shop is at 
that he is into for thousands of dollars, they're coming after me and asking, where's the money for our stuff that we gave them? And, and there's two shipping. Okay. There are two shipping containers in my shop right now that I cannot, according to my attorney, I cannot legally get rid of. It was They were gotten by Dimitri. Gotten by Dimitri. They are stacked one on top of another. The bottom one has stuff in it that some of the sponsors had sent along with some of Dimitri's Legos. Oh, yeah. He made a great, oh, he made a great Lego model yeah. of the truck he wanted. And there's a clear plastic tote in that container that had the few personal belongings that he had, his clothing, along with our bath towels yeah, and a, my socks. A couple of them. Yeah, it's a little weird. Now, what's funny about my socks being in there, when Chrissy took off, the only thing he complained about at first was the fact that she left with his socks. <laughs> so it's kind of funny that here we find my socks in this clear tote of, of his supposed personal belongings. Yeah. The top container... This is where I will let everybody draw their own conclusions. I I am not going to, I'll give you the whole story. You come up with this, what you want. The top container is empty with the exception of being lined with Visqueen, now which is, is Visqueen is a thick millimeter clear plastic sheet. Sounds like what Dexter used. Uh, again, a little creepy. I tell you what's there. You draw your own conclusions. I on have it. no idea what his intentions. But were I will tell that. you this: I was fearful for my my safety before I went up there. Now, it's a little. It's yeah. scarier now, knowing knowing his affinity for firearms and knowing, um, you know, that he had that container up there. Like, what was he planning on doing with that? I have no idea. I, I don't know. Why would you have an empty container lined with plastic? It just, it makes no... Maybe he's got a perfectly good explanation. You know what? If we had asked him, he probably would have been able to give us something, yeah. whether it was true or not. Um, I'm sure he would have given us an explanation, but yeah. it's kind of scary to think about now. Like, where was this going? Ooh. That... You know, and some people, you know, Ken and Susie have nothing to gain by doing this live with me and you know, they're actually putting themselves out there and you know uh, they have no reason to come on here and lie or make things up you know they're not get they're not getting anything out of it but maybe oh. danger from dimitri john so, did you want to show the picture of uh dimitri filming ken oh yeah you, you have it texted to me uh, didn't you text that one to him? i don't know i don't know i had I don't know what matters. Oh, you know, that, or I can post it once we get off. Yeah. Do you ever think about going to the police or getting an attorney for well, the money that you're out? From, from here's them? the thing. So I, I have several very close friends on different SWAT departments because, again, like I said, we do alphabet soup vehicles. We have sheriff department vehicles in the shop. The problem is, is that I brought some of these guys in while Dimitri was here and we were promoting the idea of doing the 511 interiors 511 clothing to fire ems police is like crack um this is this is their their wheelhouse what they love the type of gear that they love to have so we were promoting these interiors and what we could do um he made himself very likable to all of the police that were in the shop Again, because I don't have anything in writing. I what? Is, yeah, what I, are they going to do? Getting a report made is even difficult because, hey, this guy said something to me. Okay, what? You know, where's the bruises? Where's where's the witness statement? Where's where's the stuff in writing? Yeah, we got nothing. I got nothing. The guy, you know, he yelled at me. He stood in front of me. He jumped in front of a vehicle I was in. Okay, it just like. And All your not even internet insane. trolls are demanding proof in photo and video. That's what I've got to give to the police department. I don't have that. So they won't waste the time to come out and do a report. Just because you're afraid of somebody doesn't mean that the police are going to intervene. Right. Because then I could walk down the street and say, this guy looked at me funny. Right. Um, do and, something and, about yeah, it. Yeah, do something about yeah. it. And... I sent you two pictures. Okay. So... It um it makes it very difficult to do anything like that. 
So when's when's the last time you heard from him? Uh, last actual message I got from him was April twenty seventh. Oh, that is the last message that I got from him, which of course wasn't responded to. One of my shop neighbors uh, did get a message from him uh, about a week and a half ago now, saying that he has an investor in place ready to go. So hey, I really need to talk to you guys because I got the money, got the investor. Um, yeah, I got a text on the twenty seventh. Just hey, are you guys good? I think he was sensing that something was up because we had not responded to him or anything. Yeah. I think that that was when he was trying did to you reply. Yeah. No, I did not reply. It was very difficult not to. But I got to be, you know, I just didn't know what what to say to him. I'm trying to just keep my distance now. Hold on. I'm gonna, I'm, this, this is a picture of, is that Dimitri filming? Who is that? People in your shop? Yeah, that's, uh, I believe that was Sam. myself and my son-in-law, Sam. Hold on, I'm going to add it to the um, feed so you can see it. And the other picture I sent because he's wearing his craft and strap. Is it sombrero? That's yes. the sombrero that's in our show. Yes, he was behind the bar. The guy who has the, charisma for days. I'm telling you, even even just a couple of days ago, I was having the conversation with Susie where it's like, I, am I doing the right thing? Is this real? Am I imagining something? It's great. He's blowing it out of proportion and everything. But the when you guy, put pieces together. The guy gets in your head in these. Yep. So there's me and my son-in-law, Sam. and That's Dimitri with his, his camera. Yeah. Filming an interview. And when, was this back in um, uh, July. October? Oh, yeah, that, was, that was in July. July. Okay. Yeah. Lord. So, and then the other picture was um, at our restaurant. Mm-hmm. Where we were staying oh, I'm getting, I'm getting to it <laughs> yeah that was a couple hours after they closed up even we were just hanging out with them and, and talking with them and everything but um i sent you the other one because he's wearing one of the scraps and strap t-shirts you can see that dimitri's wearing a shirt with that on it oh i see it hold on save it okay. yeah all the people asking if we'll take him to court and why don't we do that um Who's going to pay for that? Yeah. <laughs> I can't afford that. No. I would love to do something about it. Yeah, there he is in his sombrero. I got quite a few pictures like that. He's wearing his Also, scrap. like, you know, he doesn't have much money, so you're going to take him to court to sue him on what? And then put all that money out of your pocket. Right. right. To get what? To get nothing. I think and this is the most effective thing we can do is just getting the word out there and letting people know that he's like this so that other people don't get fooled like this. We were not physically harmed but look the, the psychological stuff and i don't mean to use asperger's as any form of a crutch that's not who i am but because of how that affects me differently than how it would affect uh, somebody with normal neurological function i don't want to be in the same room as the guy because when i am in the last two weeks or so that he was here um i straight up who's popping lorazepam like it was a freaking pez dispenser yeah, because was, i couldn't breathe when i was in attacks. the same room as the guy because i knew he was going to reach out and harm me or some member of my family my kids are here my son again asperger's will not leave the house asperger's and agoraphobia he will not leave his room unless we drag him out of there yeah. the kid is always here i we can't convince we did an air show yesterday the boy is excited about flying we had an opportunity to have him come to the air show and get in an airplane and take a ride on the airplane which he wouldn't do it i mean this is what the kid wants to do that his dream is to get on an airplane and fly here we've got one of the old warbirds it's a two-seater it's it's awesome and we know the pilot will put you up there he wouldn't leave the house so my son's always here i have to be afraid of what's going to happen if this guy ever gets back to my neck of the woods and my kids are here, you know, that's what people don't understand is just yeah. honest to God, how dangerous I feel he is. Yeah. We want to make sure other people are aware of that so that they're not. But again, I can't go to the cops and say, Hey, I've got, you know, this, Bad this feeling. feeling in my chest where I can't even be in the room as the guy, he's going to hurt somebody someday really bad. Yeah, what are they, they're not going to do anything with that. Well, I mean, so far we've had Ari, um, you guys, Vanessa, Chrissy, Taylor, 
Um, there's actually two more people that just messaged me who have been schemed by him. So, I mean, are, are all of you wrong and he's right? Or is, you and know. Many of us have pictures and things like that. I mean, it just doesn't make sense why why we would all make this. I mean, what would I have gained in this? I, I just can't. Well, let's show you, you know, that's why people need to thank you for speaking I'm up. Not and, looking uh, for anything. The other but... people who are coming forward. Again, my, 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 my reasoning for being here is a selfish one, not because I think I'm going to gain extra business. I, I told you that on the phone that, that my clientele circle and in, in, in your followers, probably not, not a, lot not a whole lot of crossover, but not a bunch of um, women buying um, trucks, army yeah. trucks in, yeah. uh, yeah. in um, trucks, right? <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a fact of getting the information out there so that somebody else doesn't get harmed so that people understand that what Chrissy is talking about is real. Um, yeah. I don't want to see anybody else scammed by him. I don't want to see any business come after us and say that we owe them thousands of dollars because they sent it to this executive producer guy um, that was speaking on my behalf when he wasn't. Um, and I want to make sure, as a father of two daughters, I want to make sure that no other woman out there ever has to deal with the same situation from this guy or let alone any other guy and the sheer amount of uh, of hate and resentment that i have seen online towards chrissy for speaking up i we put Dumb we put a, a d-list celebrity on a pedestal because this guy is on tv oh my god he could not have done those things that you said he did and I have seen horrible, horrible comments about Chrissy that have no right, that have no justification. And, it, and that bothers me because now when a woman does stand up and say this person, whether it be him or somebody else down the road, to stand up and say, hey, this person harmed me. Why do they want to stand up when they know that they're going to get ridiculed? It's not Shut right. Down. And the real... You know, it, it, you know, I know my demographic, um, 95% of my followers are women. I mean, that, that's, just, it, that's just in my schematics, my analytics, right? Uh, and I know that, not, you know, people who watch these TV shows are heavily women. Um, and, you know, it's women tearing down women. Uh, understand. Like, you know, we were talking tonight and I, I, you know, when we posted the GoFundMe and I couldn't believe the comments, Chrissy. No. No, okay. I it, it set me off, and I, you know, uh, I mean, what he you know, did to it, us, I can see if it's just one person, right? And, and you know, don't forget that I also had, like, you know, here, let me play this again, just to, just to refresh your memories. Uh, hold on, you know, I mean, how many people have to speak up? Oh God, I hope I still have it. There it is. Listen, the mother of my children just turned herself in to jail for running me and my children off the road. It's been over 24 hours and I do not know where my sons are. I've been calling around and calling people and I can't get nobody on the phone. The last known place that I know is that she took them out of town with a man by the name of Demetrius Snowden. And I don't know where my children are. So if you see my sons, please, Call 911 immediately and share this message because I don't play any games about my children. I love my children. Um, with that, is, I mean, how, how many different people? When when he up something. here, none of that stuff. We didn't see any of that stuff. I did a little bit of searching, my friends, because again, they know they know about me and how I I do tend to over trust on some people. They did a lot of research for me and they all came back with, oh, the guy, it says here online, he's worth a million dollars. He's got thousands and thousands of followers and we don't see anything bad about him. Well, then we find out that, no, there's this guy. There's the school that he embezzled 40 some thousand dollars from. There's the school that he installed pirated software. Allegedly. Yeah, Allegedly. 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 installed pirated software on a, on a school. He told us, he told us, no legends here. He 
told us that he founded that school. He told us that yeah. he built the Johnny Five robot and gave it to Georgia Tech. He told oh, he us wrote the Johnny. He, he he built the Johnny Five robot. Yeah, that's from actually, Short Circuit. Yeah, actually, who was it? Was it Ari that corroborated? Ari actually said that she, he did build a robot. So I think oh, that well, might have no, actually No, he happened. said that it was this big six foot robot and he gave it to that. Georgia Tech because you know, oh, he just he this this is what he does. This is how he does it. I'm. When he was here, what I saw was him attack people online with fake accounts because, oh, you know, we can't have people out here saying this. I, I watched him deal with alleged clients that he was supposed to be designing apps for. And, oh, this racial, well, not racial, uh, religious individual uh, slur for that religion, uh, mother such and such, um, who happens to be a lawyer, you know, yeah, okay, so he's been waiting over two years for this app, he can just keep waiting. Uh, ain't nobody gonna talk to me like that sort of stuff. Well, the guy paid you for a service, aren't you doing it? He, look, he just doesn't understand that these things take time. Okay, you had a contract with him? Well, yeah, but so what? Oh, okay. So I know that he has fake accounts out there. I know the terms that he likes to use because again people when you speak and you get upset you write the same way that you speak um so i've identified several of these accounts online and reported them to facebook and, and instagram to try and get them deleted i don't know if that will happen uh but i i caution everybody that's watching be very vigilant when you see somebody make a comment online look that person up do some facebook stalking if that's a brand new account hey really question where is that account from is that him i have seen online wikipedia articles from that i know he wrote because of the way the word choices that he uses um the approximate size of the containers they're 20 foot shipping containers uh you know it's it he you can't throw blood from a stone no, he's out there inciting people against Chrissy. He's out there inciting people against us. Oh, he told us that she was doing this to get citizenship. When she told us all she wanted to do was go back home she because she missed be her, her dad. Family. Yeah, her family. Her and dad her, didn't even her know. Her dad and her, <laughs> her cat. She said that her dad didn't even know that she married Dimitri because she couldn't tell her own father. She was devastated about that. and They, she, they were trying to get uh, have a ceremony in South Africa for him. So it just, I've seen what this guy does to people, his, his um, uh, critics, that's what I'm looking for. I've seen what he does to his critics, and I know it's coming our way. I'm a big boy. I can take it. Uh, I just don't like to see it happen to Chrissy. I don't like to see it happen to Taylor. Well, right, and what he did to us, I mean, that's mostly, that's financial. I mean, is it, does it suck? Yeah, it really, really does. But that's nothing compared to what he did to these women. No, I mean these women have have to live with the PTSD that they I'm sure that they're suffering from, from being with that family. I mean we were we were taken for a ride, sure, but you know, we're doing great compared to what the other what the women have had to suffer. I just I don't want to see anybody else go through that. Well, I thank you guys for you know coming on. Like I said, you have nothing to gain by doing this. You know it's uh, and thank you. And you know, I hope. You know, I, I just spoke to another business owner today who uh, was screwed over by them. Uh, and, you know, the, 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 it seems like the chickens are coming home to roost. Like, you know, yeah. it's out there now and, you know, it's been able to charm a lot of people, it seems. And I think it's time is running out. I hope so. I really hope so. Because I don't want to see any more people hurt by them. Is there anything you guys want? I think we've covered pretty much everything. Um, I know we're, we're at an hour and 40 minutes. I didn't even think we were going to go. Um, is there anything that you want to say that you hadn't that just... Uh... Just... Uh, if, the, if, if you're familiar with the guy, if you're in a situation, do not put yourself in a situation to be alone with him. 
junk food. Junk he people. made it very clear to us that he had no friends because, well, you know, people just didn't understand him. Well, now we we see more of that. Um, don't trust him. If you own a business and this guy is talking to you about doing business with you, turn, run away. His his resume online is BS. Run right. away. And if you're like, I think there's anything that they could do to help you, but I think that you would say that you all that the help needs to go to Chrissy. It yeah. really does. It really does. Yeah. Um, and listen, I have the I have Chrissy's uh, GoFundMe link in my bio. I think Vanessa yeah. has it in her bio. Ari has it. Uh, you want to help us donate for Chrissy? Yeah. And that's very sweet of you. I mean, want to see her. And you're out. What would be the total amount? Of, of, you know, you, you said over a hundred thousand, like. Oh, easily. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think about a over a hundred k. Yeah. And you have all this material that you can't do anything with. Right. Uh, promises that weren't kept, and you're left holding the bag. And we're yeah. a little uh, worried about people coming after us now, like for mm -hmm. things we don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's the biggest concern: is what's still out there that. That really is the biggest we thing. don't know what companies think that i'm giving them something for the stuff that they gave us that i never got the stuff that's that's the biggest concern so is there a company out there that thinks that i'm doing i'm building them a truck let's say because they gave him a hundred thousand dollars i don't know i don't know maria says please go to the police there's enough evidence to mention everyone else i mean it might behoove you just to go to the police to have something documented like on record documented. you know just I, I know that there's nothing they no, can do but at least happen. something is recorded you know what i mean yeah yeah so that's again it's something that we need to try more we talked to our attorney about it um the the concern was always that they don't even want to take the time unfortunately the police are again not to get political the police are overwhelmed they they can't come out to take every story. Um, and it that's just that's unfortunately how it goes. Have you thought about a protective order, maybe? Uh, again, I talked to my attorney about that. And again, with no, with nothing in writing, no threats in writing, no bruises about me or her. Again, we'd be wasting a lot of time and money and effort yeah. to go through and wind up like Chrissy getting it dropped. Um, yeah, Chrissy had more evidence. Yeah. But. I would like to point out that when I got the restraining order, my biggest reason for getting that copy of that restraining order is we had no contact with Chrissy. We had no idea she was even still in the country. But I wanted to see if I could find her attorney's name on that paperwork so I could reach out to her attorney and say, look, here's what he tried having us sign. Here's what we know. Unfortunately, the number that was listed on the restraining order is for a helpline. And that helpline out in California is absolutely no help. Because when I called them and tried explaining to them what was going on, all that they would keep telling me is, well, we don't have a supervisor here for you to talk to. Well, this is this is what's happening. You know, you got somebody that's going to court. Your no your number is on the on the paperwork here for it. Yeah, sorry, we can't do anything for you. Go to LAPD and file a report. I'm in Wisconsin. I, I, I'm not driving out to LAPD to file a report. Yeah. I don't want to be in the same city as him. And again, you try and make phone calls, and you're in another state. What do you? There, there's, you. Why are we even bothering to talk to you being in another state? Um, so now I have spoken to Chrissy. Uh, I made it very clear to Chrissy: Do not give me your phone number. Do not give me your location because I don't know what we are looking into a vpn we're looking into what can we do to truly protect our network because again this guy had access to everything we don't know right what, in our house i don't i mean what I... he still sees or what he doesn't um because i i and i told chrissy I, I gave her my phone number and told her give it to your attorney have your attorney call me i i, I don't want that that knowledge in my head of where she is because if anything happens to her, did he get it through my my communication? Right. So um, Shay Doc just said here, does, do you have a business website? Uh, even though women watch it, I'm sure a lot of their husbands would be interested in your. And that's a good point. 
Yeah. Like, let's try and help you out at least with your business a little bit. If we can get some some new business for you, that'd be great. I would think, right? Yeah. So the website is mvheartstore.com. So it's a military vehicle. Um, on the website, you're not going to see the truck build. You're just going to see the parts. Um, he was supposed to be handling all the truck build. Right, right. Do I have it right? Let me see. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. There uh, you go. Right, oh, my God. I got your address and phone number. But oh, why? Well. There. Okay, good. Whatever. Is that it? MVPartStore.com? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. yeah. Yep, that's it. Um, no, I mean, it's. It's what I, they say, if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. So I guess I'm not really working seven days a week. Well, he does, he does a lot of playing there too. Yeah. Playing with the trucks. So. So. so I think we should, um, I thank you. <laughs> and, you know, very brave of you, just like Ari for coming on. I, I thought it would have been a, a good point of view from the, you know, especially a male. Uh, you know, it's just not one person who has it, it's a couple of people, and there are more people coming out. And, um, you know, well, thank you for giving us the platform to be yeah. able to get that out. No, thank you, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. And you know, you're helping out and you're doing right, and I, I admire that. And um, you're always welcome if there's anything else you want to say or uh, talk about. And um, I want to thank. Everybody in the comments, uh, my moderators, uh, and please, 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 please check out Ken and Susie's part store if you have husbands who like trucks. Uh, that, and then also, uh, if you haven't donated to Chrissy's GoFundMe, it's in the link in my bio and IG, Vanessa's, you know, and even if it's $5, um, it'll go a long way. I think that's the least amount you can give. Yeah. Uh, and I think we're already up to like forty, forty three hundred dollars already. So uh, she's in a really bad spot right now, uh, especially where she's at, and she's running out of time. So that's the biggest concern for Chrissy. And um, everybody have a great day. I'll be live in a little bit later. Nine and eight fiance stuff. Um, but thank you, Ken and Susie. I'm going to end this. You can hang on for one second, okay? Don't, okay. don't stop yet. Everybody have a good um, a good day. I'll see you in a little bit.